You alright there? Hello, welcome to Black on the Ranch. Yes, believe it or not, this is actually an episode of Bloke on the Range, not Bloke off the Range. Here we're combining our passion for testing out military history and skiing. Now, as you may well notice, the chap is beautifully dressed in Alpenflage. I am beautifully dressed in wool. This is all post-war, uh, mostly 1950s, I think this was 1980s. Wool. Now... The origin of uh, this little nonsense that we're doing, and we're getting some extremely funny looks doing it, shall we say, um, is a little comment on the Army Rumour Service website a while back, which said that actually um, the, uh, the guys fighting in the Falklands were worse protected from the elements than British soldiers on the Western Front in World War I. And the reason behind this was that wool, which is what I'm wearing, is much better at protecting you from the elements, particularly when wet, than cotton or polycotton, modelled by the chap. Now, um, we thought we'd test this. Okay, so what I'm wearing is some wool trousers. These are actually uh, later walking out pattern ones. It's all wool serge. Uh, from the bottom up, we've got a, uh, I will not, no, I will not fix your computer t-shirt, a traditional Edelweiss shirt, a mountain infantry tunic, and a uh, 1950s great coat. Now these great coats aren't very thick. They're not made of like blanket or anything. Uh, with a liner, the liner uh, doesn't go down the sleeves. But uh, let's just say I'm quite toasty warm. Uh, even though down the bottom this morning it was minus eight. Um, now. I'm not going to go into details on what the Americans were doing, but let's just say that the European armies were basically universally wearing all wool, wool surge from the year dot until the 1960s, around that time when more and more cotton started to be used. And the, uh, the British went from 1937 pattern battle dress, uh, which had trousers going up to your middle and a short coat, which was ironically modelled after the uh, uh, ski suits of the era. So... It is at least vaguely apt. Um, and then the wool was phased out in favour of polycotton and synthetic started coming in. And I suspect that the comment on the Army Rumour Service was probably fairly true. From my experience of this so far, a um, bit of full disclosure, I've been so impressed by the performance of these trousers that I've been wearing them as my normal ski trousers. Um, now, until all the modern hyper-modern, breathable fabrics and stuff came in, I suspect it was entirely the case that you were warmer in the old woolen stuff than in polycotton. Now, I'm going to take over the camera and the chap can show you uh, what he's wearing. But, what I'm wearing is a uh, like 60s, 70s, 80s Alpenflugger uh, load-bearing ensemble. I have uh, underneath is a dungaree type arrangement with, the, with straps, two pockets, um, you got waterproof, um, a waterproof plastic covering over the knees and thighs, um, which is coming off, but even underneath it's, it's been waxed to some extent. Here I've just got a long sleeve thermal top, and that's it, and then the jacket has multiple pockets everywhere you can possibly think of with inner compartments, uh, space for your pens and a Swiss Army knife. Uh, there's pockets at the back. The idea being you could carry all your stuff without any further rucksacks, burgundy and whatnot. Um, for the moment, I'm plenty warm. And uh, I'm doing some proper skiing. I think I'll be just fine. Uh, one thing definitely though is uh, me rear is very cold sitting in the snow. So that bit is not insulated <laughs> and damp. <laughs> Mine was fine though. So yeah, we'll see how it goes during the day. 
Uh, I think warmth-wise, well, obviously, multiple layers will be warmer than this, but I don't think I'll be cold. But on the waterproof front, I think the bloke is definitely going to be a winner. So now what we're going to do is uh, ski around some, get very, very intimate with some snow, and then to simulate going into a, uh, a warm place, we're going to go into a warm place and have lunch with Aussie Dave, and we'll see what happens to the uh, various amounts of snow that are covering our various equipment. Uh, yeah, maybe a beer stop. Oh, yeah. At some point. Beer o'clock, of course. Yeah. Right. So uh, let's get to it. Oh, yes. One more thing. This is an entirely action cam filmed day because I'm not bringing my nice mechanically stabilised Sony up here because either it's going to get hurt or I'm going to get hurt falling on it. So uh, there you go. Your turn to fall over. Oh, hey! <laughs> ah. Go on, give it a good roll. My initial thoughts are, uh, well, it brushes off mostly. My gloves are getting quite wet, but they're still warm. Uh, the, the material's not actually taking much moisture from this, which is uh, quite pleasant. The chap, on the other hand, is clearly sticking. Not as much as I anticipated. It might have some sort of treatment on it. Some because it is. Yeah. You just shake it, it comes off. Well, but you're going to have quite a wet arse, I think. I don't know to start with. Yeah. <laughs> From the snow. Okay. <laughs> right. Let's go get a bit more intimate with the snow and then uh, ski on some more. Ah! Ah. No. Too tiring for you, <laughs> Oh, man. I'm just so bad off, beast. Ah. Uh, 
Okay, so uh, we skied for a bit. We got a bit snowy. It's beer o'clock. Cheers. Cheers. Right. I have no fear sitting on this snow in these trousers. The chap, on the other hand, I do. So I'm sitting in on my hat. Because, uh, yeah, for some reason they didn't waterproof the rear. So, unless they had some kind of butt flap that uh, nope. protected you, uh, yeah. You had it, you had to, uh, what's been what, about two hours and a half skiing since I uh, first sat down. Um, it's nowhere near dry, so. I can imagine if you got rained on in this. It would be horrible. <laughs> Me, on the other hand, I'm dry. My gloves are a bit wet and heavy, but they're warm and wet, although they're, they're just drying off of, off of body heat and uh, the sun. That's not too bad. Um, I'm wearing far too much. I'm, I'm, I'm too warm. We did a long descent, and uh, I was sweating by the end of it. Well, it's fine. Yeah. However, you have a wet ass, and I don't. Just need to be more flashable. <laughs> Right, so uh, we'll finish up these beers and then uh, do some more skiing. Because we love military history, here's a little anecdote for you. You can see there's a saddle there, nice and white, new shape. Up there is allegedly the site of a famous battle in the olden days between the women of the valley and the valleys are on the other side, the ridge. You see the... Uh, the cattle were grazing up there with their Alpenglocker clanging away and suddenly they noticed that the uh, bells were ringing less and less. So they rushed up the hill to investigate, the women that is, of the valley. The men were away working the fields and they saw that the valleys had come over and were rustling their cattle. So the women grabbed their pitchforks and they went at them and won. And uh, apparently there are still uh, mound, grave mounds, tombstones up there. But there you go, Alpine warfare. Quick update, I'm halfway down my beer. I've been sitting on the snow the whole time and I do not have a cold, wet arse. <laughs> rub it in, rub it in. Right, almost end of the beer update. I've been sitting on this snow the whole time. Um, it has, the moisture has seeped through now, but because I'm not wearing anything cotton underneath it, I'm not uncomfortable and it will dry off pretty quick. The chap is still sitting on his hat so he doesn't get piles. Right, so, lunch stop. Um, well, I'm, I'm quite comfortable, and uh, even though I'm wearing too many layers, it, I'm, I'm not overheating, which is, uh, which is good. It's something that seems to come out from, uh, with wool is that you've got a much broader range, which is comfortable. The chap is getting an awful lot of attention, a lot of nostalgia. A lot of nostalgia because, of course, most of the people, this is older generation, this is still living memory, they had to wear this, and they keep on going past and muttering, going, why, why are you wearing this? Because, yeah, fully loaded up, it was terrible. Yeah, well, like magazine pouches, like 12, ma 10 or 12 magazines in the front and that. Yeah, and in miserable. the end it would have been 57 mags. Yeah, uh, miserable. Utter misery, but unloaded and for skiing, it's great. How's the wet arse? Apart from that. Still wet then? No, nope, we're dry. Finally. <laughs> it's taken that long. <laughs> Fine. Well, at least I was, I was kind of half expecting you to rock up with a pair of K31 slingers. Like oh, if only. Yeah. We wish. Uh, yeah. We can. <laughs> so, <laughs> what the legality that would be. Yeah. So, this is Aussie Dave. What well, do you think works. about being seen in public with us two idiots? What a line embarrassing, but scientifically interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Dark glasses on, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's easy to find you in a restaurant, but I didn't say that much. Uh, which, which probably isn't really the aim of the uh, <laughs> camouflage outfit, is it? No. <laughs> we look bigger twerps than the snowboarders. 
Oh, I wouldn't go quite that far. <laughs> well, they have behaviour issues. As well, as yeah, well, they, well, I mean, I have been cross country skiing before. I used to wear battle dress trousers for cross country skiing. Well, they're, so they're based on battle dress trousers are based on ski yeah. ski trousers. They, there's basically a ski suit of the era, but in khaki brown. Wasn't well, there some sort of thing a couple of years ago where they tested like the, the Hillary era of alpine clothing and found it was actually better than the, like the layers of silk and lambs and all that was actually better than the modern Gore-Tex and it doesn't the, surprise the, me super fibers and stuff and actually it wasn't any heavier it was better thermally it was better waterproof wise and yeah because what I felt we were drinking a beer down there oh you have oh I've just noticed the shirt oh. <laughs> proper shirt proper shirt He's gone full Helvetic. <laughs> <laughs> Is there what's what's bandage for going full retard? <laughs> right, so that's a very long lunch over. Let's uh, go back down and wrap up. day of skiing and sitting out on the terrace in the blazing sunshine. So, for me, aside from getting a wet behind, this was actually very enjoyable, it's very comfortable, uh, especially if you're doing a little more adventurous skiing. Um, Could you imagine having it filled with magazines and well, everything? Well, obviously, no, that would be quite hard. And I doubt they were probably, they probably skied fully loaded, but uh, yeah, all the people that did it and commented on the way up and said, why? <laughs> but, as a uh, cheap surplus uh, ski outfit, yeah, it's only a bit unique after the piece. <laughs> uh, from my perspective, despite having uh, clearly put on too many layers, actually, one thing that Wool really has going for it is that you've got actually quite a broad comfort band. Um, I always find with fleece, if, it, if I'm not exactly right, I'm either shivering or sweating. Whereas with this, it seems to, it seems to have a, uh, a broader comfort band. Uh, the gloves got very wet very early, and they were warm when wet, but uh, the wind's picked up now. And coming down, that wind really cuts through those simple gloves, and uh, that got slightly unpleasant. But uh, as for the rest, oh yeah. Uh, Calf length, a calf length great coat is not ideal to ski in, but it wasn't anywhere near as bad as I thought. So, there you go. Wool, actually, not that bad. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider supporting us on Patreon if you haven't already. If you can't or don't want to, not a problem. Thank you very much for watching anyway, and uh, see you again on the road sometime. Bye. Miss the bus.